In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some properties of quadratic functions. And the, uh, the learning goal here is to represent and interpret quadratic functions in, in more than one way, in a number of different forms. So in this example, uh, Fred owns a business that sells hoverboards. And his accountants have uh, given him this data uh, on the business's profit in, a, in both a graph over here and a table. And notice it says uh, hoverboards sold, X represents the sales in hundreds, so that's not two, it's 200 sold. Uh, that would be a 10 hundred or a thousand sold. And the profit, uh, F of X represents the profit, it's a profit in ten thousands. So for example, this uh, 24 here is actually uh, 24 ten thousands or $240,000. Um, this negative 21 would mean it's negative 21 ten thousands or that's actually a loss of uh, negative two hundred and ten thousand dollars. So what we're going to do in the next couple of pages is find uh, functions in a couple of different forms that model Fred's profit. And so let's flip over to the next page. And so I have that same data. This is this, exactly the same data that's in this table here. So 0, negative 81, 1, they sell 100, they, they lose $48,000, 2, they lose 21,000. Up to the best here, uh, if they sell 600, uh, they're making 27 uh, ten thousands or $270,000. And so this is the data here. Now, um, we're going to take a look at differences and in order to uh, start getting these, uh, these different functions to model our data. So let's look at some differences. I'm not going to bother to do the entire table because once we've done several, we can see the pattern. So from negative 81 uh, to negative 48, remember this is the way you subtract. Whoops, negative 81, there we go. So that's the actual calculation to get this uh, uh, first difference here. From negative 81 to negative 48, it's actually gone up by 33. From negative 21, subtract negative 48, so we take that, it's gone up 27. So that's what we're doing to get these differences. So this one was 33, this is 27. From negative 21 to zero, it's gone up 21, so that'd be 21 there. And then zero to 15, well, that's gone up 15. And 15 to 24 uh, has gone up nine. And I'll do one more, 24 to 27 has gone up three. So first differences are different, so we know it's not linear. So we go to the next set of differences, the second difference is to see if it's quadratic. And it did, certainly did look quadratic from the previous page. So from 33 to 27, it's going down 6. 27 minus 33 is minus 6. 21 minus 7, it's gone down 6 again. 21 to 15, it's gone down 6 again. 15 to 9, it's gone down 6 again. I didn't bother with the 9 to 3 here because, and that would be negative 6, we can see that they are all the same. So if they are all the same, remember that means constant second differences means it's a quadratic function. So uh, now I'm going to focus on two different quadratic models here. We're going to do vertex form in this page, and then we'll talk about intercept or factored form in the, on the next page. Uh, they have... Um, they have different usefulnesses depending upon what data you're given. Okay, uh, the data we have here, they're both uh, fairly about the same amount of work to find each one. But I'm I'm just going to choose to do the uh, vertex form first. So vertex form looks like this. Remember, h and k are the coordinates of the vertex, and so the vertex would be at 627. Remember, 600 boards that make 27 ten thousands or two hundred seventy thousand dollars profit so that's the vertex I know it's the vertex because that's the highest possible point see it's to go one less or one more on either side is going down the same amount so that's how I am guaranteed it's the vertex and we could see that from the previous page uh, if we just I'll just go back here quickly 627 so 627 that was the vertex And just screw on. There we go. So vertex is six seven. So uh, six is my h value. Twenty seven is the k value. Now, in order to find a, we need to pick a point, a uh, point from the graph. We use any point we want. Uh, the one point that's not convenient to use, though, is the vertex. Because if I substitute a six in here, 
I can't really solve for a because what happens is 6 minus 6 is 0, 0 squared 0, and then this term with the a disappears. I want to find what a is, so don't substitute 627 in, any other point will do. So I'm going to use 415, but again, I could have used any other one. So uh, 15 would be the uh, function value or the profit. Uh, 4 means they're selling 400 hoverboards, so that goes in place of x. And I want to solve for a here. So the first thing I would do is, is uh, do what's in the brackets and square it. So that's negative 2 right there. And if we square it, we get 4. So this is going to be 4a here. I want to isolate for a. So I want to get the 4a term alone. So I would subtract 27 from both sides. So I'm actually doing this. So I'm going to take 27 away. Some people say move the 27 over. So we're going to subtract 27 from 15. And of course, that's going to be negative 12 equals 4a. And so, so to find a, we divide negative 12 by 4, which gives negative 3. So the uh, stretch factor is negative 3 here. So we can write a negative 3 in place of uh, a here. And then that's the function in vertex form that describes this data. So uh, the uh, vertex is at 627, and of course we can use that to answer some questions. Uh, for example, we could uh, check to see what the profit is for a certain amounts. So like if we wanted to find out, well, let's say he may he sold 550 hoverboards. This isn't one of the questions on here. We don't have that data. We would expect it's something between the 24 and 27, but where exactly is it? So we could take the uh, equation and plug 5.5, because that would be 550 minus 6 squared plus 27. So it gives us 26.25. Of course, uh, remember, that's in tens of thousands of dollars. So we multiply that by 10,000. So if he, they were to make and sell 550, then the profit would be $262,500. So we could use it to answer questions like that. Uh, so that's the vertex form. So on the uh, next page, we're going to talk about uh, factored form. So in factored form, we need the intercept. Some people call this factored form. Some people call it intercept form. And uh, intercept form looks like this. So it's, and some people use a P and a Q here instead of R and S. Those R and S or P and Q numbers are the intercepts at 3 and 9, or it's actually 300 and 900, remember? So if we substitute those, and uh, we're going to use a point again. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, but I'm going to put my 3 in place of R and 9 in place of S. And in this case, and I want to show. Uh, also here that I'm going to substitute a different point in. Remember last time I used the point start with a 4. This time I'm going to use the point start to the 2. This is 2, negative 21 here. Uh, to give, it'll give exactly the same a value. Because this stretch factor here has to be the same stretch factor that we found on the previous page. So I'm going to substitute negative 21 in place of the profit. And then 2 would go in place of x here and here. And I'm going to solve for a. So the first thing I would do is what's in the brackets? 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and 2 minus 9 is negative 7. And so negative 1 times negative 7, of course, is positive 7. So this is going to simplify to a 7a on the right. And so to find a, we would divide negative 21 by 7 to give us negative 3. So exactly the same stretch factor. So substituting that in place of a here, that's our profit function. And um, one of the questions down here, the last one, says should both of the equations for Fred's profit result in the same function when expressed in standard form? So we would expand them both out. So if we expand this out, uh, I'm going to multiply the uh, two binomials together uh, just to demonstrate uh, how you would give an example of how you expand it out. So x times x, x squared, x times negative 9 is negative 9x negative 3 times x, negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 9 is 27. And so let's combine like terms, negative 9x and negative 3x add to negative 12x, and then we'll distribute the negative 3 in. So that's our standard form. And it, it will give you exactly the same thing. It has to because of the equation if we were to expand out the uh, fa vertex form from the uh, previous page. So it will give the same thing. Uh, so just a little bit of summary here before we get into one more example on the last page. Uh, in A it says, what information do you need to write the vertex form of a quadratic function? So the two things you need are you, well, you need the vertex and you also need a point. 
So in order to be able to write something in vertex form, yeah, if you had the vertex like in the previous page and then take a point, that point allows you to find the stretch factor, the A. I'm pointing at the factor form here, but still the same A as the vertex form. In, the, in If you have the factor form or intercept form, what do you need? Well, you need the intercepts, like we had the uh, 3 and 9 here, and again, you need a point, any point you want. Now, the domain and range that models Fred's profit. So the domain, um, and we're talking about all the data that was in that table. So the uh, x values uh, varied from a low of 0, of course, you can't make a negative amount of something, up to 10. Now, the table could have gone beyond 10, uh, so but it only went up to 10, so that's why I would use 0 to 10 as my domain. And the range, remember in the table, the range, the lowest profit was if they didn't make any. Remember, if we put, if we put 0 here in place of x, you get negative 81, so that's the lowest well, it's not really a profit, it's a loss of negative uh, $810,000. The highest profit was the 27. Uh, that was from the vertex here, which is the $270,000. And so, um, of course, the answer to, to D here is uh, they should both result in the same thing. And uh, so let's take a look at example number three. Uh, last one here. So uh, Dave's helping his neighbor shingle a roof. Uh, he now this is I'm going to say what they say in uh, TV or movies. Uh, don't try this at home. This isn't a very safe thing to do. But I'm just using the example for an example of something that's modeled with a quadratic function. So Dave tosses a hammer from the ground up to his neighbor who's on the roof. Okay, so his neighbor forgot to bring his hammer up to the roof. He wants it. So Dave tosses it up. Not a very safe thing to do. I'm not advocating doing that, but that's what we're doing. So the height of the hammer above the ground is modeled by this quadratic function. H of t is negative 5t squared plus 10t, uh, where h of t represents the height in meters, and t is the time in seconds after he's tossed it. So uh, four questions. Uh, A asks, how high above the ground is, uh, oh, and this should say the hammer tossed from. So there we fix that, how high above the ground is the hammer toss from. Uh, so uh, let's take our equation here. And so there's our equation. Now, when it's tossed is at the beginning of the domain for this function. And the beginning would represent a time of 0. So we would substitute 0 in place of t. So that's what it looks like. So negative 5 times 0 squared plus 10 times 0. And that's 0, that's 0, so it all adds to 0. So we must have tossed it from the ground. Okay, it was on the ground when he started to throw it. B asks, if his neighbor misses the hammer, when is it going to hit the ground? So, and this all kind of goes together here. It's going to hit the ground when the height is zero. See, now we actually found a place where the height is zero when it was first tossed, and then it's going to hit the ground a few seconds after that. So. So here's our function again. So in order to find, we want to find the time when the height is zero. So we're going to put zero in place of h of t and solve for t. We could also just take the function and put it in factored form. That's very similar to what we're going to do here. So there's a common factor of negative uh, five here. And actually, before I start factoring, I'm just going to rearrange this a bit. I'm going to take these two terms over to the left. So when I do that, see, that'll be a positive 5t squared and then a minus 10t. And I'm, I'm just doing that because it's uh, normally it's conventional to do that. We often rewrite equations with the terms on the left. You don't have to do that. Okay, it's just, just a very common thing to do. So we can factor a 5t. That's a common factor to both of these. So if we factor a 5t out, 5t squared divided by 5t would be a t, and negative 10t divided by 5t would be minus 2. So that would be the factored form. If we set the 5t to 0, so that looks like this. So we would go, in order to find one of the zeros, 5t equals 0, and then divide out the 5. We would get a time of 0, which is actually what we just found over here. So that's not new news to us. The uh, the t minus 2, if we set the t minus 2 factor equal to 0, like that, and solve for t, we get 2 seconds. 
So that's the time we're actually looking for. So there's the zero seconds from this one and the two seconds from that one. And let me get rid of my writing here. So that's the time here right now. It was thrown at zero seconds, and if his neighbor misses it, it's going to land back on the ground at two seconds. So uh, Dave better get out of the way. So it's thrown from a height of zero, and then it lands at a height of two. Okay, so if we want to find out where the axis symmetry would be, the axis symmetry is right in the middle between those two uh, roots at zero and two. Now it's pretty easy to find the number halfway between 0 and 2, it's of course at 1. There is a mathematical way to do that. Uh, you can actually average the roots, so if they're more complex numbers or numbers that aren't as easy to work with as 0 and, and 2, add them and divide by 2 it gives you 1. See, that's just the average of those two numbers. So where x equals 1, that's the axis of symmetry. And that's a useful thing to know because that's the x coordinate of the vertex. So in the uh, in this this question here, uh, where would the axis of symmetry be? That's going to be at one. In order to find the domain and range, uh, in, especially the range part, we need to know how high it goes. What's the highest point in the graph? So we could put this in vertex form, do that complete square method. But if we have the roots as well, and we know where the axis of symmetry is, you see the x coordinate of that vertex will be at one. So we could just take the function. And uh, I'll show this calculation in a moment here. The um, domain would be values between 0 and 2. This is the entire graph. Remember, it's thrown at 0 seconds. It lands at 2 seconds. We're not really concerned with other times between outside of 0 to 2. So that's why the domain would be uh, times between 0 and 2. So now to find this highest point, we're going to take the function and substitute the 1 in because we want to know the height at a time of 1. So actually, it probably would have been a good idea for me to put a t here. I just noticed I used x here, but my I'm using t for my variable. So that would have been a good thing to do. Let's fix that. So there, t equals 1. So we're going to put 1 in place of the time in our function and evaluate this. So 1 squared is 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. So that's going to be negative 5. And 10 times 1 is 10. So that would add to 5. So that's how high it is right here. That's actually 5 on the h of t axis. And so the uh, range would be the h of t values, the height values, are all real numbers between 0 and 5. 0 is the lowest one, that's the ground. 5 is the highest one, so h of t, the height, varies between 0 and 5. And that would be the range. Uh, I'm abbreviating here d as domain, r represents range. And that's the end of the tutorial.